Hello everyone, my name is Marina Aini. I'm a PhD student at the Biomedical Engineering Department at the University, under the supervision of Dr. Anif Ziegel and Professor Ilan Dinstein. Today I will present you my work on estimation of uh, longitudinal changes in autism severity using automatic speech analysis. There is a long history that says that people with autism speak in a different and unusual way. Previous, previous works have found um, several speech abnormalities, which include among them increased pitch and pitch variability, meaning that uh, children that uh, uh, are autistic speak with uh, uh, higher pitch values and that their values vary more than of uh, other children. In addition, the papers have found that uh, these children are also speak in a slower speech rate than others, and they have a prolonged word production, meaning that it takes them more time to pronounce a word and an, uh, or an uh, utterance. And also the intensity, which some papers says uh, that um, say that uh, uh, children with autism speak in higher intensity or, or louder, and some papers uh, show the opposite, and we will see how it uh, expressed in our research. These features are reflected during the ADOS diagnosis, which is a diagnostic tool for autism. As part of the assessment, there are several rubrics which quantify speech abnormalities that are uh, associated with autism, and uh, these include intonation, intensity, speech vocalization or frequency, which means how much the, child's, uh, the children speak or at which rate, and also the repetitive speech, which inc includes a repetition of a speech of himself or the clinician. For example, we examined several of uh, these uh, rubrics in uh, our database. Um, we examined two features on uh, 102 uh, Hebrew-speaking children that most of them were diagnosed as uh, autistic and, uh, and a group of a control group, and we saw that uh, indeed ch children with autism speak with higher pitch values, and they also speak louder than the control group. One of the works in the literature that has done an automatic speech analysis is called the Language Environment Analysis, or in short, LENA. It is a commercial closed uh, software which uh, Require, requires from a child to wear a recording device on a, uh, on a specific shirt they have designed, as in a picture above. And uh, the children uh, wear this recording device during the day for at least 10 hours in their home environment. And the, and the LENA software detects child vocalizations, and then it quantifies some uh, uh, speech features. For example, how much the children speak, or a uh, number of turn takings with another person, and more. Uh, this, <coughs> this LENA software is, uh, is an automatic tool which is used not only for um, autism uh, specific, uh, quantification, but mostly for prediction of uh, other language development disorders. Using the LENA software, uh, they predicted the children development using speech features, and they found a positive correlation between the age of the children of typically developed and um, uh, children that have a delayed uh, um, language impairment, and, uh, but they didn't uh, find any, uh, posit any correlation with autistic children, meaning that autistic children speak in a different way. And in my work, we wanted to see if it's uh, possible to uh, quantify autism severity using speech features. So this brings us to the goals of this work. The first goal was to build an autism severity estimation system using speech signals of young children. In my previous work, we have designed an initial system that was based on 72 recordings, and now we are reproducing the results on bigger database and uh, testing their sensitivity. The second goal is to use this, uh, this system in order to estimate the longitudinal change the children overcome between two other sessions. And uh, by this, we could understand if the children improved or deteriorated be, uh, during this time, and uh, if the treatment they had helped them or not. With the university's collaboration with the Israeli National Center for Autism and Neurodevelopment Research, we have created a database of speech recordings of uh, ADOS assessments uh, that we collected from the, from the diagnostic room in Soroka. 
In this room, we have eight, mic eight microphones that are scattered through the room. And in this work, we used uh, one microphone, which is hanged over the table where the child sits with the clinician. The child can move during the session, and, but it still keeps uh, a close distance between the recording device and the child. Um, these recordings were recorded using a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz, and later they were down sample took 16 kilo in order to save some memory space. So our database uh, in this work includes 112 Hebrew-speaking children, where 156 have done only one ADOS assessment, and 56 children that have done two ADOS assessments, one to three years apart, deriving two recordings for each child. Uh, in this table, you can see that most of the children were diagnosed with ASD, and that an average age is uh, four years old, um, that ranges between one to seven years. So by using both recordings of these uh, 56 children, we want to see if it's possible to estimate the change between two other assessments of the, of the children. Meaning, we use the severity score the, the children received on their first ADO session, and we estimate the score they received on their second uh, session by using their recordings, and we calculate the longitudinal change by subtracting the first score. Show me. Okay. Um, and by su subtracting the scores, we calculate the longitudinal change. Uh, do you hear me now? No, show me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, in this work, we focused on three severity scores, the total ADOS, the social effect, the essay, or, and the ROB, which is the restri restricted and repetitive behavior. In these three figures, you can see the scatter plots, where on the x-axis is the severity score the children received on their first ADOS session. Uh, you can see the total ADOS, the essay, and the ROB. And on the y-axis, you can see the score they received on their second session. Each dot here represents a child, and you can see that some of the children did improve during this time, and some of them even uh, deteriorated. The Autism Severity Estimation System is built of several steps. First, there is the creation of the database of ADOS recordings. Next, we apply manual speaker annotation in order to detect child labels. These labels are then used in the quantification of autism symptoms, which are then fed into the ASD severity estimation model. And this model predicts the different severity scores, the total ADOS, the SN, and the RLB. After we have completed the first step, the creation of the database, we continue to the detection of child, uh, um, child labels. To do so, we use an in-house labeling tool, the graphical user interface, which enabled us to manually uh, label where uh, in the recording the child speaks or the therapist, where is uh, the noise uh, labels and uh, so on. And by using only these child labels, we continue next. We use an additional algorithm which detects the vocalizations in these child labels. As you can see in the example here, we have one child label which was separated into two vocalizations that have a silence between them. And these vocaliza vocalizations include the speech, crying events, screaming events, and, uh, and some more. Okay. So from these vocalizations, we extracted 48 prosodic and acoustic features. These features include the pitch, which is the fundamental frequency at which the vocal cords vibrate in voice sounds, the energy, which is the amplitude of the speech, the spectral tilt or slope, which can help us to estimate if the speech is breathier or pressed, <coughs> the two first formants and their bandwidths that related to how different vowels sound, the jitter, which is, uh, uh, quantifies the uh, frequency instability, it calculates the, different, the, var uh, the variability between adjacent pitch values, Zero crossing aid, which is widely used in uh, voice activity detection algorithms. 
and duration, which quantifies the length of the vocalizations. At the end, for each child, we have a feature matrix where the rows of this feature matrix represent different combinations of vocalizations of the child, and the columns represent the different 48 features uh, I have showed you now. So we analyze these features and examine their association with the autism severity. Among all, several uh, show the uh, significant correlation with the autism severity. For example, the pitch, which we also saw before, showed uh, that uh, for children with more severe autism symptoms, uh, they have higher pitch values and that their values vary more during the other session. In addition, we also found that uh, children with more severe symptoms talk less and that their vocalizations are shorter than of other children with lower autism symptoms. Okay, so this whole set of features are then used for the SD severe, uh, severity estimation model. In order to create the estimator, we uh, split our database into two, the training data set and the testing. In the training data set, we use the recordings of the children that have performed only one other session and the recordings of uh, the first other session of children that have two recordings. We build the deep learning estimator, which I will explain what is it, and uh, we use it in order to predict or estimate the severity scores these children received on their uh, second other session. So uh, this estimator is an artificial intelligence algorithm which is based on neural network that consists of 12 layers that are trained using the actual severity scores the children received and the speech features we calculated. And uh, these layers are uh, trained to learn the correlation between the, the, the speech features and the autism severity score and uh, the network predicts the, the severity score it uh, learns, uh, it learned. And at the end, in order to test this, uh, the performance of this network, we calculate the correlation between the predicted or the output of the network and the examined or the actual severity scores. So we train two separate uh, networks, one that, uh, that estimates the social effect score, the ASA, and the other one, which calculates the ROV score, we sum them together in order to derive the total ADOS. We compare this method to, to, the, uh, to the network that uh, directly trained to, uh, to learn the total ADOS score, and I will show the results between them. So for each of these systems, we estimated the severity scores of the second ADOS session the, child perform the children performed. Um, by using this, uh, this output and this uh, score of their first session, we calculate the longitudinal change. So in the first rows of this table, you can see the prediction uh, performance uh, of the social effect and the RB when, this, when we separate them, uh, uh, when we create a uh, separate network for each of them. The third row shows you when we sum them together and compare to the actual total ADOS. And the last row shows you when we directly train our network to predict the total ADO score. So we can see here several things. First, that uh, the ROB performed worse than the social effect. And that when we separate the network into estimation of SA and uh, ROB, it performs slightly better than we directly estimate the total ADOs. So because S because S and ROB are uh, different domains, one that quantifies conversational uh, behavior and the other repetitive and restricted behavior, this is reflected in the speech features we calculated, and so it affects on the neural network which trains uh, trained, uh, um, using it. So this is why we see the difference between the results. In particular, we see that the ROB was harder to estimate than, this, uh, than the SA, and in our speculation, because the RB symptoms are less evident in the speech during the ADOS uh, rather, than this, uh, rather than the essay, and so it was harder for the network to learn the association between uh, the speech features and the different ROB scores. For conclusion, we demonstrated that acoustic and prosodic features carry valuable information about the ASD symptoms. We saw that the ROB symptoms were harder to estimate using the speech features. 
we demonstrated an, uh, an, uh, a system for autism severity estimation using only speech signals. And we can use this speech analysis in order to track the autism severity over time and uh, adjust a better treatment for the children. Thank you for listening. And I also would like to thank my, uh, my BSP lab teammates and the clinicians we worked with. And also we would like to thank the Israel Ministry of Science and Technology and the ICEFs for sponsoring this work. Thank you. Yes, most of them were boys. Approximately 80% were boys. Our boys. Any more? Okay, Thank you. Ask, ask a question. Oh. Um, so you, you trained and tested on the same individuals, just on their second ADAS uh, session? The training included also new children that were not in the testing uh, process. And, uh, and yes, we included the, the first session in the training, and the second session we we predicted in the testing uh, world, yes. So, as you expect the children to have different uh, characteristics in the first or second session, I mean, is it really independent testing this way? If it? Is it really independent testing this way? Um, we did, okay, uh, about the features, uh, I believe that it is because we know that uh, children improved or deteriorated, so their speech features probably will uh, be different. And about the second uh, question, uh, we checked the, this uh, system when we didn't put the first recording in the training process, and we still saw that the second session was appro approximately the same uh, prediction uh, performance. So we see that it doesn't uh, overfit our, uh, our system and uh, it's valuable result. Um, we, I don't think we checked it, but uh, I think you better know than me, but uh, I think that uh, it's also dependent how, mu how much the child uh, works during this time. Um, it's, not o it's not only about the age, but the process he going through about his ASD uh, symptoms or treatment. Uh, but it's interesting to check if uh, there is a correlation with it. Yes, it's even without the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, within the, uh, the framework of the set. Okay. You have different stages. Mm -hmm. What one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but we checked the we checked correlation today. Yes, and if and we saw that there are different features that were selected for the Okay, thanks. Thank you.